Welcome to the lab safety orientation for first year physics. Safety instructions are presented at the start of the lab. Safety instructions um, for each lab are given at the start of each lab. That means that if there's any piece of equipment that might have specific hazards or dangers, we'll let you know. We ask that you arrive at your lab on time to receive these safety instructions. If you're late, the instructor has the right to, deny, right to deny you entry to the lab for that week, and you will have to book a makeup lab or try to switch to a different lab time, which may or may not be possible. So please arrive on time or early to your labs. Food and beverages are not permitted. So you cannot consume food or drinks in the lab. This is both for your safety and the safety of the equipment. If you have a water bottle, it must be sealed and stowed in your bag. If you need to take a break for a drink or a snack or a stretch, leave the lab for a few minutes. Just let your partners know and try to do it at a convenient time. We ask that you be aware of your surroundings. Um, some of the tables are constrained with people behind you. So uh, take a look around whenever you have to get up and out of your seat or if you have to push back, um, just so you don't bump into someone else. No sense permitted. PEI has a scent free initiative. You can look at that more on the UPEI website. And what that means is we ask that you use unscented or fragrance free products for hair care, deodorant, soap, lotions, laundry, that sort of thing. Fragrances and scents can cause some serious health problems to some people. That includes migraine, asthma issues, etc. We ask that you put away kit bags and coats. Uh, we've got some hooks that you can put on uh, your jacket and your bag, or you can put them in the bottom drawer of the cabinets by your lab experiment stations. On some labs, we might ask that you put your bags and coats along the back of the room just because we'll be using the wall. Be prepared to tie back any long hair. So if we're using equipment where there is a risk for long hair to get entangled and caught, you must secure any long hair. Keep a hair elastic or another way to secure hair in your bag. That should be easy. Safety equipment. Unlike chemistry, lab coats are not necessary in physics first year. Safety glasses are required for some experiments where there is a risk of eye impact. We will let, try to let you know the week ahead of time and there's reminders in your lab manual too. You can bring your own or we will lend you a pair for those specific labs. We generally recommend that you have closed to toes closed toed shoes uh, in general, just in case it dropped objects, we'll be carrying masses, etc. We ask that you never work alone. If you come to the lab class early and there is no one else in the room, do not start using any of the equipment. We'll be giving safety instructions at the start of the lab, remember. If you were to have an accident, there would also be no one to help you. If the door is open, please come inside, sit down and uh, get settled. If the door is locked and closed, please wait outside. The door will be closed when the lab starts. I'm going to go through a few slides that show the route in order to evacuate the building in case that the alarm goes off. That picture, first picture, just shows the main exit door to the lab. Um, once you leave, you'll be seen getting to that main hallway. And if you turn around to your left, you'll see the emergency exit sign. It has a green and white sign that shows a stick person going through the door. Green is actually the wavelength, this is the physics explanation, that our eyes are most sensitive to. So emergency exits have switched to using green as a color. Once you go down the hallway, you'll see some cabinets for students to store their belongings. And then you go past them down the stairs. And at the bottom of the stairs, there's some emergency exits, not alarmed. And then you go through those into the parking lot that's right beside it. And in the middle of the parking lot, there is the assembly evacuation point for our building. Please stay at the assembly point until you're told that you can leave. The emergency officials need to account for everyone who is in the building to ensure that no one is left inside. They don't want people right next to the building in case emergency trucks and etc. have to be there. Evacuating the building. If you're interested, uh, the nearest emergency exit and all the fire safety equipment is indicated on emergency evacuations plans that are posted throughout the buildings. You can check those out. We also want to point out that fire extinguishers are in all labs. The use, you can use a fire extinguisher to put out a fire if it is small and safe for you to do so. Instructions for using a fire extinguisher are on the side. Please ask us if you want extra assistance or understanding how to use them. If there is a fire or another emergency, there are fire alarms. 
that includes for if a fire is too large for you to safely extinguish, you'd head for that nearest emergency exit and pull a fire alarm. Fire alarms will be near any emergency exit. Uh, once you've reached your destination, you can call emergency services once you've reached safety to report the fire and any details. If you're injured or there's damaged equipment, please report it. So if you're injured, even a small injury, please report it to your lab instructor. We might need your help to fill out an incident report form and that helps us prevent future injuries and to follow UPEI's health and safety policies. We also want to let you know that there is a first aid kit in the second floor hallway near the water fountain. If you find broken equipment or break lab equipment, that might be hazardous too. So inform your instructors so they can either repair or replace the equipment and that'll help you with gathering good data too. In case an emergency, you can just dial 911 from your cell phone. But if you're using a landline phone that belongs to the university, we have an internal call system. So in that case, you must dial an extra nine to get an external line. That means that the emergency number for 911 becomes 9911. And all campus phones should have a sticker on them to remind you. It also has the short UPEI campus uh, for uh, number code for security. Failure to abide by these safety rules. Now, if you do not follow the lab safety rules and if you refuse to change your behavior when asked to do so by the instructor, you will be asked to leave the lab room and you will be not given an opportunity to complete the experiment. We've tried to make these lab rules fairly say, uh, simple and straightforward and uh, common sense. So we do want to make sure that you follow them. At the end of this, uh, we're, you're going to close this and you'll complete a lab safety acknowledgement. So that'll mark this lesson as complete. If you do not understand one or more of the safety rules, please contact your lab instructor as soon as possible to get clarifications, then put in your acknowledgement. We want to let you know that participation in the labs, you do have to have the lab safety acknowledgements to participate. And we'll start that in the second lab. So if you show up for the second lab and you haven't done this, we'll ask that you go away until you've done it. And that means you might have to do the lab in a makeup lab session, or you might have to complete it at a different time. So please do it before you go to your second lab. As an incentive, filling in the acknowledgement form also opens access to an optional bonus quiz that can replace a later missed or poor grade post lab quiz. So we encourage you to do that easy bonus quiz. If you get into midterm season and you end up forgetting to do a quiz, that's the mark that could be re replacing it. So make sure you do it before the deadline, which is the start of the second lab. Thank you.